Hello, RC fans. Racing 393. Uh, this is going to be part two of my Kyosho Burns four-wheel drive rebuild, which um, between this video and the last video, part one, which is pretty much an intro, I knew this build was going to be difficult. Um, there's, You can get bits and pieces for these still. However, it is super difficult. There are some bits... Uh, which I found almost in what well, it was well, they were impossible I, I did find them eventually for my mp5 when I rebuilt that um, but it took ages I mean I'm, I'm taking I think that took me near on two years so I'm, I'm guessing this one's going to be even longer so I haven't really I haven't done anything to it yet but I'm going to go over some bits with you and I think what I'll probably start doing today is maybe taking off you know we're gonna maybe check the shocks the front shocks or something for now something which I know can be easily rectified just by cleaning and, and a bit of service I'm hoping that the the oil rings are not worn out for example but we'll find out when we get down that far so what I've done so far is is nothing now, you'll probably see in that picture there, here, there is a motor there. Now, that's a ZX21, but it's not for this kit. In fact, I don't think it will, it will fit because the exhaust outlet is here. Um, and the other problem is, is the, the carb. I, mean, I know that can be moved, but anyway... I've just put it there to see whether it, it could or would fit. It it would go in, but again, I've just put it there so it's not on my shelf. Um, it's certainly not, it's not the correct uh, engine for this car. It's probably period correct, but it's not the right engine. So now I have got an um, another motor upstairs, another engine, which is it currently, um, I've got exactly the same one that's in my um, Kyosho MP5. If I can find a picture of that, so I can't remember the name of it, but I have seen pictures of them. Um, I'll put a picture up on the screen now. And... I could, I think that might fit. It's going to be, it isn't period correct uh, at all, but I've got a spare one. So we'll, we'll cover that later on. Now, the main reason for buying a car like this, and it is a complete, almost rolling chassis. I was bidding on another one from America, which was probably in poorer condition. I didn't quite bid enough. I was a bit skeptical about how much I should pay for it. In in retrospect, it was it sold for a good price and I actually could have my maximum bid I could have probably I wouldn't say doubled it, but I wouldn't have lost sleep if I had I'd rather not pay double what it went for, but I was really, I was prepared to. It's probably worth it. I think that was one of my eBay mistakes because it did have bits on that chassis that are missing off this one. Not a lot, but it would have been mainly spares. Anyway, onwards and hopefully upwards. So th the other thing I have got for this, I've got a manual which I printed off, 32 pages. Um, they can be easily found online, so I've got a manual for it. Um, what else am I waiting for? So I've ordered a, a re-release um, shell, which is, which is exactly that one there. I quite like the fact that it hasn't got a rear wing. But you can put a rear wing on, but that is quite very retro, and I, and I like that. So I've got a shell, it's exactly like that shell actually. Uh, Lexan unpainted, obviously. So that will hopefully go on. I ha I've also noticed this does have body mounts. I wasn't sure, but it has got a rear body mount and a, and a front body mount. So all good. So the, the bits that this is missing 
which are important <laughs> is the motor um, with the exhaust and everything on it the engine mounts I mean the engine mounts that came with it are kind of like this but they might bolt in but the, this bit here should be elongated they're about the same size but I, uh, I'm gonna have to work out how I can do that with, with limited tools um, they may work because they fit the chassis these these holes here would fit the chassis the chassis has been a little bit butchered underneath to, to accommodate those mounts but it's not the end of the world um, I don't know even if this exhaust is a Kyosho exhaust it could well be but it to me it looks a bit generic um, but anyway that's that that's besides the body it, it can be used if necessary it doesn't really matter so I think what I'll do in this video oh um the fuel tank the this is loose here or uh the hole's too big for the outlet which I need to look at I mean I did find a fuel tank for this car and online but oh my god that it'd have been cheaper to buy that rolling chassis because it came with everything. Um, that's, they will, it will come up again, no doubt. I'm, I'm pretty sure that um, a, another roller like this, in, in poor condition maybe, will come up. Um, and hopefully I will grab that. I've got, a, in my head now, I know how much I could probably bid for it. Now, of course, until I get this stripped down or start taking bits off it, you never know what you're going to find. So I think the first thing is uh, probably to take the front bumper off. Hopefully, just, I've got, I mean the other thing I've got coming for this is some stainless steel screw set. So I don't really want to strip it all the way. It can be stripped down, but all the screws and the the hardware currently on this, most of it anyway, won't be going back on. I'll put some new new screw sets in. Uh, that, Again, like I say, I won't know exactly what's missing or if anything needs replacing until I take it apart. Now, I've looked online and looking at the sort of the things I think could be wrong with it. Mainly things like gears, differentials, output shafts, drive shafts, centre shafts. You can still get them. They're, they're sort of scattered around the world. So it, again, it won't be a cheap exercise if I feel that something's not right with this. But um, I think the first thing, if I remove the front bumper, that will allow me to get to one of the shocks and we can have a look at one of the shocks close up and, and just see what's involved um, by stripping it down maybe. Um, they, they look in good condition, they, they feel all right. I must admit the backs feel quite nice. The fronts feel a bit springy, so it's like they've got hardly any oil in them or anything like that. But um, yeah, so these episodes, they're going to be a lot shorter, hopefully, and many of them. So as I get things done, I will show you stage by stage. I'm going to try and keep it regular. Uh... And if I get any new bits or things I find, I'll do like an update video. So um, these will be like part one, part two, part three, etc. Uh, so this is going to be part two. Uh, the update video, I'll just call that. I don't know what to call that yet. Uh, up, update video one, two, three, four. So you're going to get part one, two, three, four, and then update video. So the update videos will be very, very short and just showing you things I may have purchased explain uh, where I got it from, how difficult it was to get hold of, and perhaps why I've got it. So I'm going to, because lots of people have rebuilt these over the years, and there's some absolute cracking rebuilds. I mean, mine's going to be nowhere near what you see on the internet, because you can't get the bits for these anymore. I think the hardest thing I'm going to find, if I wanted to go down that route, is a period correct engine. Uh, one of those OS, there's, there's a couple of them, I can't remember the sort of the prefixes, but OS motors, which in themselves fetch 
uh, a shitload of money. So anyway, without further ado, what I'm going to do, I'm going to tip this up. I'm going to try and keep the video running because I can uh, edit out any sort of long, long bits that don't need to be seen. But I'm going to tip it up and we're going to try and remove this bumper. So I'm going to try and use as much of the original parts as I can. So I definitely won't want to be stripping, bending, cracking, snapping things off this. I mean, when you look close up at this, it does look in reasonable condition. Um, the guy I bought it off of was a Tamiya guy and knew very little about it. I don't know how he got it, actually. Perhaps he didn't realise what he had. He must have done, because anyone that's involved in um, RC will have a rough idea of how much certain things are worth. I've also got to remember to move myself out of the way when doing this, because you can't see anything. I mean, there's not much to see at the moment, is there? It's just me undoing a couple of screws. I know people have said filming, taking screws on or off is super boring. Uh, yeah, I suppose, yeah, I suppose it can be, but I suppose it depends also what you're doing. So, I've got the bumper off. I'm, I'm need to, I need to wipe it with something. So I don't want these videos to be super long. I'm looking at perhaps no more than about 20, 25 minutes. If they're shorter than that, that's better. So I'm gonna, because the restoration process is about checking everything. I don't want things to be broken. I just wanna make sure that nothing's busted. Um, there's nothing wrong with that bumper. Um, but there's going to be a lot of mess um, when you take things off. You know it's like you take things off and then you realise that something's broken. But we, don't, we won't know. You won't know that until you actually get into it. So as you can see, we've got the, the front bumper off. So I think what I'm going to try and do... So I might have to revert to the the destruction. So most things are held together with like circlips, aren't they? Little circlip rings. Uh, this, I'm not sure how that's held. Is that just a pin in there? I don't know whether that pin there, can you see that? This is like a, a pin which that will go into. I don't think this sh it doesn't come apart. I'm going to have to refer to some instructions to see if that just pulls out. It doesn't go right through to the other side. Oh, I can see actually. I think I can see. It's difficult. There's a, there's a, what I think is a grub screw here, which screws down and, and sort of pinches that. So these, they're the things you've got to be really careful of because if they're stripped or someone's tried to take them off before for whatever reason and and can't do it so mm. okay so there's a i'm gonna have to try and see if i can get that undone if i can loosen that i can undo this and i can get that shock off and we can have a look at the shock um i can move the car and we just have a look at this one for now um right Let's get a tool that might fit that. So this is the, this does undo. I won't take it all the way out. So in theory, that should, that should come out. Uh, I don't think there's any more in there. No, that does look, it does look like it's come up enough. Uh, it's definitely not biting into that shaft. So in theory, if I get like a flathead screwdriver, I should be able to prise. That should move away from there. I don't know. So getting that out is going to be a little bit of a mission. Um, don't know how seized things are. What I think I might do is just undo this one here. 
I believe that could be that. If it's only the joy one. Yeah, so I'll undo that. I don't want to take too much off because I've got nowhere really to put all the hardware at the moment. Also got to remember that you can't see anything when I've got my, my hands in the way. So we've got the bottom shaft loose now. Um, it does come out, but it's a bit, it is tight in there, you can probably imagine. So that's, that's that out and the shocks fell off. So let me just put these to one side. So got the shock off. Uh, first impressions are, it feels all right. Um, it's a bit springy. It's quite surprising how stiff they are. Um, Cause there's quite a lot of weight in the car. It's not as light as you might imagine. So that's the pivot shaft there. So that, that only a little bit of a clean up. That's been sat in there for the years probably. So yeah. Um, Right, so let's have a look at this. Give it a little bit of a wipe down. I mean, it looks okay. We've got this uh, type of pinch bolt here, which they're the, they're the ones that you, if you're not if you're not careful, you can strip them like super easy. Um, I just need to find a smaller crosshead. It's quite nice. It doesn't seem to have been molested in any way. So the spring is quite, it's quite tough. Um, you can see that that'll only come off one way, like so. And I'll be honest, it doesn't feel too bad. And the shock absorber's in reasonably good condition. I think the, the end eyelet can go on a bit, a bit more maybe. We can perhaps clamp that up and, and that should wind on a little bit more. I don't know. I don't know if the instructions say a specific amount here. Um, I'll have to check the instructions. And the top should just come off. That's going to be the, <laughs> that's the deciding factor because it's an aluminium and heaven knows how long that's been on there. But it hasn't, it's not leaking. So getting that top off is going to be a, a bit of a mission. It's aluminium and it's probably been on there forever. Uh, I don't know, because I've, I've tried it and it just slips. But I don't want to scratch the anodise off. Um, I've got some pliers which kind of should grip, but they don't. Um, all I got, all I used was a uh, adjustable pipe gripper. Um, and some rag. Didn't have to squeeze it that hard actually, and then it just come loose. So we've got the top undone now. So we're gonna see how much or how bad the oil is in there. So we've still got the, the cap on the top. So I'm gonna just pull this out. Uh, so it doesn't look too bad, actually. I mean, that, that, that does test it. It doesn't look bitty. Um, and the shock piston does come a bit higher up than the shaft, the, the body. So that looks all a okay. I'm going to give it a wipe down. Um, I'm going to put some slightly softer oil in, give it a wipe down, and build it back up again. Um, I'm probably put it back on the car to complete this video. So just bear with me while I do that. So everything's cleaned. Uh, I've got the oil out. I've taken the cap out. It's there's nothing wrong with it. So what I'm going to do, just going to use some Tamiya medium damper oil. So I'm not going to put anything else in there. I'm just going to fill the chamber up. Um, of fresh oil, so it's not right to the top, and then I'm going to have to 
I'll put the piston up and down, but it, the piston comes up above the shock body, so I won't bring it up that high, because that will let, I suppose it could let air in. And I've got it sat on my um, car stand, but you can see, um, that's how high I've got it. I will add a bit more to it in a minute. Um, I just, I've just got to let the bubbles rise to the top, which I can see them doing there nicely. I can probably add a bit more oil in there, just a, just a drop or two. There we go. So, whilst that sits there, it should settle the oil. And then what we then do is we put the top on and we should have a shock that doesn't leak. Um, and then we'll just reinstall it all back together. Um, so let me, because um, the battery's getting low on the on the camera, let me just, uh, we'll let that settle and I'll be back once I've put the top on. So the shock is all built back up. Feels absolutely lovely now. Um, around the cap, I put a little bit of just some shock o-ring grease, not because there's o-rings there, but just so it doesn't go a dry fit. And that's lovely. I mean, it's, yeah, it feels much better than it did with that other oil in. And I've just wound the, uh, the standoff at the bottom there, just wound it up a bit tighter on the thread. So it's not done super tight, there's a thread showing. But that's back on there now. So I'm gonna put the, um, let's put the spring retainer back on, uh, which only goes on one way because it's got a step on it. So we'll put that on. That should slide on there, lovely. Then we've got the spring. And then we have the bottom retainer, which should just slide on when you compress the spring slightly. Like so. And that feels quite stiff. Feels all right though. So that is a rebuilt shock. The first stage of four others. Uh, <laughs> how many on there? So that's the first stage. That's one of four. So I will do the others. Um, I'll probably show you, but not in so much detail. Um, just show you some, uh, like a, a an edited version of doing the other shocks um, as it's a fairly straightforward bit to do. I don't need to buy anything. I've got everything here that I need. So I'm going to install it back on the car and I'll, uh, and I'll show you it compared to the one on the front that I haven't done. That is the shock back on. Lovely. So uh, it's difficult to show you, but that's the one I have. This one I haven't done. I mean, it feels all right. It feels a little bit like it, you know, normal. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I'll do this one. That's not air, by the way. That's just the, the shock. But much smoother. Yes, yeah, so that's good. That was a good fix. So I think I'll do the other one. And sort of, I'll do an edited part three it would be now so it'll just be shock absorber fixings they'll probably all have to come off again when i do a refurb however well any findings that i do i'll um i'll let you know but uh yeah very good i i, I like that that feels great nothing worn in there at all which is good so hopefully the other one will be the same so i'll see you very soon for part three which will just include a refurb of the other shocks and any other bits that I might like to add. So thank you very much for watching. Hope it's educational and you enjoy it. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye um, for now.